Here we are. Looking at the Alter of Shulchan Aruch. The laws of governing personal safety and the preservation of property. It's all the halakha, it's all the mitzvahs related to keeping oneself safe. So what we learned so far in the first three halakhas is the mitzvah of keeping a safe home. So that was building a mica, building the uh, fence around the roof, right? To make sure no one falls off, God forbid. As well as we talked about not raising a, a dog that might be a little scary, right? Uh, not having an open pit in your home. Right. The laws of making sure your home is safe, the kids are. Right? Mitzvah, there's mitzvahs, there's mitzvah, the positive commandment to build your to build a mica, there was a negative commandment not to have blood on your in your house to make sure that your house is safe. Mm-hmm. It was a mitzvah and shmartim to guard your guard yourself, guard your life. Right? Don't have a weak ladder. Things like that. Well, what about this one here? Number six. Wow. This... Okay, we didn't get there yet. We'll oh, we didn't? I'm sorry. It's rolling okay. dalit. Oh, dalit. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so having established this biblical commandment to keep ourselves and our property safe, says the Shulchan Aruch. And as we said, many of this stuff comes from our Gemara in, 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 um, in Psachim. And we'll, we'll kind of keep our eyes open to try to see if we can remember some of the things that were in Psachim that are omitted from here. Because right? most of the stuff in Psachim were, were um, dangers that were spiritual, right? Negative spiritual energy in the stuff. All right, so let's see. Dalit, hybrid varim. There are a number, many things. Asur chacham, and there are sages forbade. If any sheesh, but I'm sakon the fosh, it's because there is mortal danger, danger to one's life. Anyone who transgresses these, right, he puts himself in the danger that the sages said not to. One man says, Harani misak and hatsmi. I'm just, uh, Risking my own self, my chay and my line. Oh, what is it, other people's business? What I'm doing, right? Yeah. Okay, what's their problem? I'm not, I'm not endangering anybody else. The previous halacha, I'm endangering other people who come to my home, but here I'm doing things to myself. What's the problem? Who cares? Libertarian. Yeah. Or any makbed bekach or whatever. I don't. I'm just not concerned. My own safety. Chayiv makis mardus. He's liable for getting lashes. That come along with behaving rebelliously, you know, it's not biblical lashes. Yeah. Alta doesn't say this here, but he says it elsewhere. Maybe it'll come up later, actually. I think it's before. The Alta basically says, we, we, we learned about this uh, maybe a few years back. We learned about the laws of, um, um, you know, cosmetic surgery. Remember we learned about this? Yeah, years ago, we quoted the son. Sorry, son and son who was there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, the author has a line there which says basically that our body doesn't belong to us. We don't get to say it's my body, my life, my choice. No, it's Hashem's body, Hashem's life, and it's on loan to us, and it's our responsibility to take care of it. So one cannot say. I'm endangering myself. What's it anybody else's business? It doesn't work that way. Okay. So now, Elohim, here are the things that our sages said not to do because of danger. A person should not put his mouth on a like a drain pipe. Uh, pipe. Hamakaleach mayim, through which water is flowing. You stand drink, drink directly from it. Why? Because he doesn't see the water. A person might swallow some sort of uh, like some sort of worm or some sort of uh, sorry, here he says a leech, some sort of a little cre- creature that's in the water. Be aluka. And uh, okay, the aluka is the name of this uh, nima. Nima is like a creepy crawly. Mm. Aluka is the name. It's a leech. So he might swallow this leech. God forbid. It's dangerous. Okay, this was not from Margamara. So not from Sachem. Remember this from Sachem? Was it? The leech? 
No, this thing I'm not drinking directly from a drain pipe. Oh. And where are my footnotes? Why are they popping up here? Was it himself? Him? Okay. Anyway, the next one definitely, definitely comes from. My is acting very slow. I, I'm sorry, my, my, my computer's acting real slow. So it's not popping up right away. Let's see. Okay, the next one definitely is from Agamara. Actually, not, not yet. The Chain, likewise. Yeah, it's not an Agamara. Likewise, La Yishtim and Anahara is Vagamim. The Fiv Mitamza, a person shouldn't drink from a river. Or from some other body of water directly from his mouth, meaning to his mouth directly on it, mm -hmm. because again he doesn't see the water and God forbid he'll swallow something that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Nor with one hand, because he's quick. Because with one hand you can't scoop up too much water, so you're quick. and you throw it into your mouth. But in a and you're not checking the water properly. But if you're scooping out the water with two hands, you can slow down. Well, I am going to look at the water to make sure it's safe. Mm -hmm. And therefore, Balaila at nighttime, it's always forbidden to drink at white time, at nighttime. Mm -hmm. You can't check. Yeah. But feel Even if this comes from Al Gamara now in a minute, even though you might uh, be drinking through a filtered vessel, it's got like a mat or something, and it filters out the water. Nonetheless, nonetheless, you should not drink water from the rivers and the lagoons because Shavridi hangs out there. Yeah. That negative spiritual energy you learned about in the Gemara. They're all Shavridi. They're all Shavridi. <laughs> right? He... He uh, San Vedim. What's that? This causes blindness. Yeah, that was the Gemara said, right? Shavriri causes blindness, drinking from this thing. Okay, so there's two groups. There's two halachas that, that the Yalter puts together because they're all related to drinking water. The first one is not to drink water in such a way where you cannot see the water. Mm. So whether you're drinking at night and there's no light around, it doesn't matter what you're drinking from. Whether you're drinking directly into your mouth from a, mm. from a river where you don't see anything or with one hand you can't look. Now at nighttime, you could drink filtered water at home. That's not a problem because there's no leeches there because you have a filter, even though you can't see. But don't drink from the rivers and the lagoons at nighttime, even if you could see, and even if it is filtered, because of Shavdidi, who causes blindness, God forbid. Okay. Now, the next halakha comes from a different Gemara also. That's also related to nighttime. It says like this. I feel about you. Even during the day, one should spill out a tiny bit of water before they drink. This is Allah that's still practiced today. Right. Yeah, growing up, my parents did it, and I do it as well. Mm. Person should drink a little, pour out a tiny drop of water before they drink. Because there's, there's uh, these bad uh, these negative spiritual energies, these negative demons, you call them, mm -hmm. who drink from the, who drink from the um, rivers and pouring a little bit of the water out, and this is how you, this is how you cleanse the water of these negative spiritual energy by pouring out, pouring out a little bit before you drink. Yeah, so things before you drink from your cup, you just pour out a tiny drop. That wasn't from our Gemara. Right yeah. now, the parentheses is from Agamara. Valel Shabbos Levavi on Tuesday night and on Friday night. Don't drink water at nighttime when it's dark. I'm sorry. Remember, we said if you have a, if you have a candle, it's okay. Right? And we said that you have to, if you don't have a candle, you should announce so and so, son of so and so, wants to drink water. Mm -hmm. Right? Remember this? Somewhat? Yeah. Kind of? Yeah. So Tuesday night and Friday night, the person shouldn't drink water in the dark. Even though he Poured out a little bit during the daytime. Then it's done in a clee and it's been filtered through a through a filter. So there's no issue of uh, eating something that's not appropriate. But nonetheless, a person shouldn't drink water in the dark on Tuesday night and Friday night. Because mm -hmm. there's a negative spiritual energy that hangs out there. 
And some might, if he's very thirsty, he needs to drink, and it's dark, what does he do? He should throw something into the water and then drink it. Maybe we'll just make water. Mm-hmm. It's interesting that the, that the Alter Rebbe gives this, gives this solution, because the Gemara there give other solutions. Right? The Gemara there said things like you can wake someone up and tell them that you're drink, that you're thirsty, or you announce yourself you're thirsty, or you bang on the cover, right? But here, but the Gemara also gives the solution where you, but the Gemara gives a bunch of solutions there for how you solve the issue of the negative spiritual energy that's at the water on Tuesday and Friday night. And one of them is to throw something into the water. I'm not sure why, out of all of these things, Alter Rebbe chooses this one. But anyway, that's what it is. Okay, continuing. And as a rule, a person should not drink uh, lukewarm water from metal vessels, metal cups. Because it's harmful to the body. I'm not so sure if this is because of a negative spiritual energy per se. Is this from our Gemara? I don't think so. Was it? Hmm. Okay, so what do you do if you have... Yeah, it's from Baba Matthias, from Magamara. Right, so the, the lukewarm water in a metal cup is no good for you, so therefore don't drink it. Unless you put something into the water that is usually put in water to flavor it. Because then I saw them like some grasses, like, you know, let's say lemongrass or something like that, which flavors water, people do that. A tavlin or some sort of other spice, or ikir besamim or, or roots of some sort of spice, the creates them and the like, where people put into the water to flavor it. So if you do that, then the water becomes okay. If you boil the water, or they are boiled, then it's okay. And if the vessel is earthenware, then it's always permissible to drink, even if it's lukewarm. So the lukewarm is only a problem when it's combined with Metal. Okay. Right. Okay. Misha Ochal Oishasa. Or Yashan, so a person who ate, who slept, who drank, or Shimish Metose, or engaged in uh, intimacy, or he kissed them, or he did bloodletting. Remember, we learned this about bloodletting, they used to have yeah. this old um, method of healing where they would let blood drain and then they would allow the heart to produce new blood. So, one after he's done any of these activities eating, drinking, sleeping, intimacy, or bloodletting. They shouldn't stand up immediately. It gives a shock to the system. And it's dangerous. You should wait a bit. Before he gets up. Because getting up immediately is a shock, a shock to the system. Like your body is your body's like in, is working through whatever it's working through. Yeah. And therefore you have to let it rest before you jump up. Yeah. So, is down. And one who... A let's blood, or engaged in intimacy. Koidim, sorry, again, I'm sorry, uh, rephrase it, sorry. Someone who lets blood, and then right after letting blood, oh, wow. he has intimacy, he's intimate. While his body's still weak, oh. right? He's getting his, that's no good. Koidim, yeah. before he ate something to restore some of his energy, oh. after letting blood, literally his blood's in his own head, right? That expression, meaning that he, that, He's taking the left into, into his own hands. So it's like a modern equivalent of a person having an operation and then it goes right to intimacy. Yeah. Not a very good idea. No. So you got to eat something first. Rebuild your strength. Likewise, a person should not let blood only on what, Sunday, over a V on a Wednesday, over every Shabbos on a Friday. But not on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Why is that? Let's see the footnotes. Taking some time for the footnote to pop up. Do you have it there? No. 36, 37. It should be in the back. Oh, in the back. You should have it. Oh. 
Okay, so Shabbos is no good. That's that for sure. She says neither. What? Mine just says. Look at look in number thirty four. You see number thirty four. What does yeah. it say? It says with regard to standing up right after waking from sleep, to the altar of the Okay, that was before. Try I check uh, footnote thirty six maybe. It just says Nida seventeen eight. And thirty five. What does it say? Shabbos one twenty nine b. Okay, no explanation for why I shouldn't do this. You have to look up the Gemara, I guess. But why Friday? I don't know. How can you prepare for Shabbos? Don't blood let blood. Yeah. Oh, uh, maybe that's Friday why. You can. Oh, oh, Friday you can. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to look at the Gemara. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, look above. Also, laver tachas kir It is forbidden to walk under a a uh, wall that is leaning. It's gonna collapse on you. It's dangerous. Oh yeah, gesher to ua. No walking on shaky bridges. It's unsafe. Or the kanas the or to walk into a ruin. It's not safe. It'll collapse. Or the bishar makom sakana to walk into any other dangerous area. Talacha, you cannot walk down the streets of the alleyways of Chicago at night. Just not allowed. The loyetze yechidi belayla. A person shouldn't even go out at night alone. I think Mara, if I remember correctly, gives two reasons for why you shouldn't go out alone at night. One is for safety, and one is because it's suspicious. Hmm. You know, people walking around alone at night is usually looking for trouble. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it is from our Gemara, but not, we haven't got there yet. Hmm. Yeah, okay, now I remember. Okay, look at look footnote 41. We'll see what I, what I was referring to. So this halacha in the parentheses, which says not to walk out at home at, mm -hmm. at night, yeah, comes from Sochem 112b-113a. We haven't got there yet. Okay. Right, we're still in the middle of 112a. The author of places this ruling in parentheses, indicating that the matter still requires consideration. Right? So in his Kuntus Acher note 1, he notes that Brachas 43b, this is what I was referring to, mentioned this prohibition only with regard to a scholar, Torah scholar, the rationale being that such conduct would arouse suspicion about his character. Why is he walking around the middle alone at night? What's he looking for? Right? And could lead others to cast aspersions on him. Yoma 21a states, it is forbidden for any person to set out on a journey before daybreak. Right? So those passages do not, however, mention any prohibition against people at large going out at night. Right. And yet, M'sachim, it does. The author of states this states that his words are taken from Rama, whose ruling appears to be based on M'sachim, which we decided to, from which it can be derived that one should not go out alone at night for fear of demons. The author of concludes the matter requires further deliberation and therefore he puts it in parentheses. Okay, so we haven't got to like Gemara yet, so we'll have to see when we get there. What? Yeah, I, I thought it was to begin with because of danger and because of uh, CD behavior, but that was limited to right. a Torah scholar. Okay. People at large. And for people at large, it seems to be implied from our Gemara that it's because of the demons, negative spiritual energy, which we guess we'll get to when we get to that Gemara. No, but it says well, we're allowed to leave at that. It's just not scholars on. Right, but it seems from Sachem that it might apply to everybody because of demons. Oh. That's why Alter was putting it in parentheses because yeah. it still requires further deliberation. Right? She's really. We'll have to get there when we get to that Gemara. Okay, halacha. Oh, continuing, sorry. Mm -hmm. A person should not sleep in a home alone at night. The bias. Yeah, so we're looking for uh, footnote 42. Look at footnote 42. In his Kutus Acher, note to the author of besides to, you see it? Yeah. In his Kutus Acher, note to the author of besides to uh, the Pri Chadash, who based, who, based on the Talmud Yerushalmi, state that this applies only in a dark house, mm -hmm. i.e. one into which no light enters at all. Basing a statement on those sources, Darki Teshuva maintains that if there's any light in the house, this prohibition does not apply. Magad Ram 2397 and Dr. Chova also mention that many authorities consider every room in the house as a separate entity, and thus, mm -hmm. even if there are other people sleeping in the house, if one is sleeping in a private room, these restrictions also apply. It shouldn't be there in the dark. 
What's the problem? Continues out there in the Shulchan Aruch. Yeah, back to the main text. Yeah, 43 is a good too. Yeah, we'll get there in a second. Tomorrow, but... We'll get there. Yeah. And anyone who sleeps at home alone at night, Achazas Lilis, is possessed by a negative spiritual force known as Lilis. Who is Lilis? Let's have a look at 43. It's like a second, a second for it to pop up here. Yeah. Shabbos 151b, Rashanida describes Lilis as a demonic creature with the face of a female. She became the mother of the demons. Essentially, she is the force that causes what we call nocturnal emissions. Oh. So in other words, a person being home alone at night in the dark mm. is uh, e easily lead one to have uh, impure, improper thoughts and therefore improper results, mm. even if it's not uh, voluntary, but it could be involuntary. Mm. That's what Lilith represents. Okay, but also... Back to the main text. But also, Lolom Besak Forest, it is forbidden to sleep overnight in a cemetery. That's not from our Gemara, is it? What's it say in 44? Should you give the source there? Yeah, let's see. Nida. Nida. So, see also the Rosh Hashanah, which interprets sleeping in a cemetery as a sign of emotional instability. Interesting. Isn't that, isn't, maybe it's 17b. What's the Tanya uh, Nida? section that safe peg and the chapter three needed okay um okay we'll stop here we'll have more tomorrow on what person should and shouldn't do not to invite negative harm, harmful spirits and again we'll keep our eyes open for what comes from our Gemara and what doesn't yeah okay wonderful day yeah okay